Welcome to Anatomy. This is a short little game by Kitty Horror Show, and it appears as though we're stuck in this small, dark house. It also appears as if we're not going through the front door either, but, uh, well, you know the pattern by now. In the psychology of the modern civilized human being, it is difficult to overstate the significance of the house. Since as early as the monastic era, humankind has defined the era of the past. Of all the structures that mankind has invented for itself, there is little doubt that the house is that which it relies upon most completely for its continued survival. Now this is the main gameplay mechanic for Anatomy. We need to explore this house and find some tapes, but thankfully we have some hints to tell us where to go. We don't have to break these plates, but we must. Though it does seem a little rude. But our next tape is right here. And now that we have it, we may return to the kitchen. Now, by the downstairs bathroom, it is referring to the floor that we are currently on, so we don't need to go too far to find a bathroom. In fact, this one looks like a bathroom right here. And, oh, it appears we don't have much of a reflection, but that's fine. I'm sorry, there may be something wrong with my copy of the game. Uh, that hint... That hint doesn't really help us, uh, but... It does say that some doors are unlocked, so we'll, we'll keep trying. I have a feeling this next tape might be in the garage. As you can tell, it's quite hard to see. It's very dark in this house. It also appears as if there is no tape in the garage, so... We'll have to try elsewhere. Let's take a look upstairs. It looks like we found the other bathroom. Bit of an odd picture. Looks almost medieval. A castle tower, perhaps? I'm not entirely sure. Let's try some more rooms. Well, this just looks like an ordinary bedroom. With a, a whimsical picture on the wall. That's a bit odd to have at your bedside. I would think one could remember those lines on their own. But I guess it always helps to have a reminder.
Oh, here's our next tape. And... Oh, I, I must apologize again. I believe my computer is maybe having a bit of trouble running this game. That's okay. I'm, I'm sure we can get this fixed. But for now, let's press on. We can return back to the kitchen. But before we get back, you may have noticed something else about this house. It is completely and utterly silent. There is no ambient noise whatsoever. There we are. The hints are now back on track, and it's directing us to the living room this time. So let's head right over. It appears as if the TV is interactable. Unfortunately, we can't see anything on it. Now, the living room is quite a large room, so let's take a look and explore. Best not to leave the light on. This most likely isn't our house to begin with, so that would be quite rude. Although, a little bit of light from the TV wouldn't hurt. But with our tape in hand, we may return. It is easy to think of the kitchen and dining room as the stomach or digestive system of the house, as this comparison is tenuous. By contrast, the function and analog of a bathroom should be immediately obvious. The high rows and corridors of the house are like veins, providing circulation coursing throughout its frame. A staircase bears more than a passing resemblance, both physically and symbolically, to a spine. The windows of the house serve much the same purpose as eyes, while anyone who has ever rounded a bend or a long drive and come suddenly face to face with a pale, dark manner will tell you that the house is a creature capable of. Hmm. No hint this time. It appears this game may actually be broken, but I will have to look into that. Perhaps another time, though. I have a feeling there is a tape around, somewhere in this house. The garage appears to be not the correct place once again. We'll check upstairs, as every other place we've looked downstairs has either had a tape or been empty. The master bedroom is a nice place to start. It's spacious and... red. There's our tape. Now we can return back to the kitchen and continue listening. The bedroom is perhaps the room that most eludes direct comparison in this fashion. At a stretch, and allowing for a bit of poetic sympathy, it might be said that the bedroom is not unlike the human mind, or those parts of it which dictate thought and imagination. In the bedroom, do, 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 do. I dream that there are teeth growing all over me, everywhere on me and in me, like cysts or bone spurs. They're loose, but I can't remove them because I have no hands. I look out through the bedroom window and I see a truck approaching. A young man steps out, approaches and enters through the front door. His body is covered in swollen ticks the size of quarters. He's walking through the downstairs hallway and laughing. He begins urinating on the wall. 
who spits on the carpet. He's moving through the first floor, breaking and upsetting things. He goes to the basement and stands at the top of the stairs. I'm angry at him, so I slam the door and he falls down. I can feel his bones snapping. The texts are bursting, losing all black blood everywhere. I can feel them being ground up, dissolved and torn, splitting and shredding. I leave the door closed. I close my eyes and try to sleep. The teeth continue growing on me until there is nothing left of me but teeth and gums and sinew. The basement is dark. 